Welcome to Electron Online. Now that we understand, hopefully, what mutual inductance is, now let's take a look at what self-inductance is. Remember, mutual inductance was when we had two coils and where the second coil was affected by changes in the first coil and the mutual inductance was the amount that the effect was equal to. The greater the mutual inductance, the greater the effect on the second coil. But it turns out that the, that the initial coil, if we just have one coil by itself, it also has an effect on itself. And when does it have an effect on itself? Well, when the current in itself changes. Now let's start with a steady state current. Let's say we have a steady state current in this direction. Take our fingers in the direction of the current, our thumb points in the direction of the magnetic field, so we can see that we have magnetic flux going through the loop like that. Self-inductance is defined by, first of all, the number of turns in the loop, because obviously the more turns you have in the loop, the greater the effect. The amount of flux that will be going through the loop as a function or in respect to how much current drives that flux. So, for example, this is a ratio. A good way to look at it is think of this as a ratio. And so you can see that the self-inductance, the amount of effect the coil has on itself, depends on two things. First, how many turns the coil has. The more turns it has, the greater the self-effect. And the second one is how much magnetic flux will go through the loop as a function of how much current goes around the loop. For example, if you have a very large self-inductance, L, L being self-inductance, that either means because you have a lot of turns, a lot of, coil, a lot of loops in the coil, or you have a lot of magnetic flux with a small amount of current. So you drive a small amount of current to the loop and you have a lot of flux in the loop, that means you have a lot of self-inductance. And that, of course, has to do with the size of the loop as well. So the geometric features of the loop, but without going into an equation where you get an exact dimension and size and all that of the loop, you simply say, how much of an effect does it have based upon how much flux will go through the loop as a function of how much current goes through the loop? So it's a ratio of, well, if you have, a, let's say, one amp of current, you have X number of energies of flux, well, that ratio will determine the self-inductance or will be a measure of that self-inductance. Now, let's say we take this equation right here and uh, let's, or let's, no, let's start with this equation right here. Let's take, because we talked about self-inductance, and let's move the i to the other side. So here we can say that the self-inductance times the current is equal to the number of turns times the flux going through the loop. And of course, that can happen at steady state conditions. So when the current is constant, there's a constant current going to the loop, we have a certain amount of self-inductance, a certain number of turns that will result in a certain amount of flux going to the loop. Now let's take the derivative of both sides of that equation. So we have L, which is a constant, times dI dt, that is going to be equal to N, because that's a constant, times the change in the flux with respect to time, change in magnetic flux. So here's an interesting relationship. What happens now when you start changing the, the current in the loop. Remember, coils are inductors, they're the ones that oppose a change in the current. So once you, you begin to change the current, something begins to happen. You change the current, you will change the magnetic flux through the loop. And what happens when you change the magnetic flux through the loop? Yes, you will induce an EMF. So there will be a self-induction, so to speak. So the coil, by changing the current through the coil, it will induce an EMF in itself which will produce a current that will oppose the change in the first place, and that is actually the concept of self-inductance. There's induction, there's an effect on the, on the coil and on the current in the coil by changing the current in the coil in the first place. So, when we take a look at this, and then we go back to what we call Faraday's law, where Faraday's law says that the EMF induced is equal to the negative of the number of turns in the loop times the change of the flux going through the loop with respect to time. You look at this and you look at that, you can see that this, of course, is exactly equal to that except for the negative sign, which means that because of the self-inductance L, we can say that the EMF induced in itself is equal to the negative of the self-inductance times the change of the current with respect to time. Now, this actually has even a bigger meaning when you think about it this way. Notice that EMF induced is basically voltage. You set up a voltage around the loop. It's kind of interesting. Where does it come from? Well, there's no battery. It's simply a voltage created by the change in the current in the loop. That voltage 
is really the voltage drop across the coil. And later on when we talk about circuits and coils and circuits and inductors and circuits, the voltage drop across the coil, which is basically the EMF induced, is going to be equal to the self-inductance times how fast the current is changing to the coil. And the negative, of course, is that that's opposition there because you induce a voltage which induces a current that opposes the change and that's why we need the negative there. And so when the current increases, the EMF will be a negative quantity. When the current decreases, the EMF will be a positive quantity. And in the next video, you will see how this affect the way we determine the voltage drop across the coil or across the inductor. But anyway, now you have a good idea what self-inductance is. It's a coil that induces something onto itself. It does that in two ways. When we have a steady state current, we can simply say that the self-induction, the effect that it has on itself, is simply equal to the number of coils that it has, the number of wire turns, times the ratio of how much flux it puts through itself, so to speak, as a function of how much current that drives that. Once the current begins to change, then you can see that the self-inductance causes an EMF to be induced, a voltage to be induced, which is proportional to how big the self-inductance is times how fast the current is changing. And that's what we mean by self-inductance.